How's it going everyone? Today we are flying back out of Bozeman Yellowstone Airport all the way to Chicago O'Hare. Once again I'm taking the regional branch of American Airlines called American Eagle on an Embraer 175. Let's go! I don't know if any of you all have seen my original American Eagle review from last year where I covered a short hop from Norfolk on an Embraer 175, but if you did, you'd know that I enjoyed that flight a lot and certainly wish that it would have been longer. At least when it comes to American Airlines, the E-175 is certainly more comfortable than the 737, which is surprising to me. I don't know, I haven't flown many regional jets lately. And given how common the Embraer 175 is in the USA and how easy it is to end up on one, it's criminally under-reviewed on this channel. I hope to see more of them soon, but for now this and Norfolk to LaGuardia are the only videos up on this channel where I fly on an E-175. It was a surprisingly snowy day when I took this flight. My aircraft was on its way from Chicago at this time, but given the conditions here I was worried that it would have to divert to some other airport. This happened earlier today with an Allegiant flight from Nashville that couldn't land here. But the weather had cleared up a bit. Things still weren't going great though, as there was this Southwest flight to Denver that was supposed to be here at this time, but got stuck in Denver. I guess the conditions weren't any better there than they were here. Yeah, totally not getting flashbacks from a certain flight of the number 259. Come to think of it, there were actually two Southwest flights to Denver that were affected by this. I sure didn't think the conditions would be anything close to this, but oh well. Anyways, at this time my flight began approach toward Bozeman Airport, at the same time as another Allegiant flight from Phoenix. The Phoenix flight was set to land first while mine was doing circles. Allegiant didn't disappoint, so now it was the moment of truth. Would my flight make it or not? Spoiler alert, she made it, coming in from the other side of the runway. I couldn't be more relieved. Bozeman Airport is not one I want to be staying in for another three hours. Envoy and Republic Airways are just two examples of carriers that exclusively operate under regional subsidiaries of larger US airlines. The thing about Envoy Air is that unlike Republic Airways, which operates regional hops for American Eagle, United Express, and Delta Connection, Envoy is fully owned by the American Airlines Group and only performs American Eagle flights. And the Embraer 175s of Envoy Air tend to be newer than those of Republic Airways. In fact, I was originally scheduled to be on a brand new one. But yesterday, they swapped to this 8-year-old one, November 202, November, November. Similar age as the Republic Airways one I took from Norfolk. The aircraft originally flew for Compass Airlines, which as of 2020 has gone bye-bye. I guess Envoy went and got it from them after that. And while she isn't anywhere near the newest E-175 bird in American Eagle's fleet, she certainly isn't the oldest, and there are some that have reached 16. You can kind of tell which ones are from the newer bunch, as they'll typically have these elongated winglets. Most of the older ones have shorter wingtips. But when it comes to these Embraer 170, 175 aircraft, I don't think it matters at all, especially since Embraer hasn't yet made any significant modifications to the interiors. Welcome on board, I'll be in seat 20F for today. The first thing I noticed was that the seats on Envoy Air are a bit different from those on Republic Airways. The most noticeable difference is the color. I guess that because Envoy is owned by American Airlines Group, it makes sense for the seats to have this blue-red-gray color scheme instead of the solid gray present on Republic. Also, it looks like Envoy has adjustable headrests, which I don't remember being on Republic but I think the seats are the same size. There wasn't a noticeable difference in that. Maybe they were larger on Republic Airways, but if so, it wasn't by much. Seats have a bit of recline. The legroom is okay for a flight of this length. I plan to show some more stuff at cruise. For now, let's leave for Chicago. Lighted and focused time and crew member instructions. 
A light vest is located under your seat to be eliminated. <coughs> if necessary, and your seat cushion can also be used for flotation. Pull up to remove.
Here we are with the second appearance on this channel of the great Chicago O'Hare. I'ma be honest here, this flight wasn't bad, however I had a much better time on the 55 minute Republic Airways flight, and not only because the in-flight entertainment wasn't working today. The seats just felt a lot more comfortable on Republic Airways. It might be because they were padded better, or it just might have something to do with the fact that this flight was a lot longer. Like, don't get me wrong, these seats are still more comfortable than the cough cough Oasis interior, and I'd still take this plane over the American 737. But this plane wasn't very clean either. I don't know, maybe it was just my seat, but there was one thing that actually exceeded my expectations. That was the snack service. Before this flight, I had not yet seen American serve two different snacks, and I love Biscoff cookies, so that was a great surprise. Once again, I don't know if the Biscoff cookies are an Envoy Air thing or if American Airlines recently started serving them, but to whichever airline is responsible for that, I hope you continue to do so. And the crew were actually quite wonderful, best I've seen so far on an American Airlines flight. This brings us to the final score, which is 7 out of 10. When considering all the factors, this flight comes down to an average experience. But I'm mostly just grateful that this flight wasn't scheduled to depart an hour earlier. That could have been bad, given the harsh weather. The flight may have needed to divert to another airport before arriving in Bozeman, and I would have been stuck in Bozeman. Yeah, no thank you. Glad that didn't happen. 